And I've made some modifications to the uh, remote antenna tuner in the last video. Uh, I said it was an automatic antenna tuner. Well, it's not automatic, it's remote. So, but I think you figured that out from the last video. So, <clears throat> if you watched the last video, you know what this is about. Uh, the issue I was a little concerned about is hitting this end to stop thing remotely or being able to sense it. I don't want to damage this really nice roller inductor or uh, upset the motor. Uh, I've been playing with this thing for so much the batteries actually did go dead. So I have it on uh, jump start here, so to speak. Kind of a fast charge. This power supply maximum will do is 3 amps, 3 volts. So uh, I have it charging. It's enough to run it forward and backwards. So what I did here, uh, I tried a bunch of stuff. I thought about a micro switch. Actually, I took the micro switch out of the drill. Uh, when I said the mechanism, also in the other video I made a mistake. I said I took the mechanism out. I didn't take the mechanism. I just took the battery and the switch and stuff out. But the mechanism was actually the motor and the gears. So I tried that. There wasn't enough clearance for any of that. I said, well, let's go back to old school method. So what I did was actually made my own set of uh, contacts here. So I have a crisscross and I have some spring copper on a little piece of uh, edge of a paint stick. I believe it's a Home Depot. Oh, it's a do it center best. All right, you're better than Home Depot. Cut that off, sanding it down. A little hot glue, hot glue gun will fix everything. Uh, thanks to my friend Ralph K, KE6, KE7VEE for loaning me some glue sticks. I'm out of glue sticks, Ralph. I need some new ones. The Corona's over, I'll hit you up for some of those. Where was I? Oh, so uh, I tried to use as many parts from the drill as I could. This is way cool. I used the trigger portion. This is the trigger from the drill that I took out. And what I needed was a guide. So I ended up making a wooden uh, little shackle, kind of a yoke affair. And there's my little homemade switch. And uh, I actually hooked it to a sonar alert. So when you uh, hits the limit, it'll hit that. But a little bit more on that. So uh, back when I worked at Verizon, they were dismantling some mainframe computers. And they had this spring stock. This was RF shield for like the doors of uh, mainframes. And uh, God, I had to have this stuff. It's copper. I believe it's copper, but it's really springy. So I have a, a few sheets of this or a few strips of this I use for various purposes. And I thought, God, what better purpose than to go make up some uh, some co spring copper uh, contacts here. And it works really well. So I had to drill the, the pivot out just a little bit more. Not much. One small drill bit more. Uh, to get this piece of dowel rod. I used to make, uh, I used to do a lot of work for the model airplanes. So I have a lot of this wood. This is not balsa, this is some sort of hardwood. This I think is part of a shim stock actually. I whittled down and made a yoke. And so here's how this thing works. I don't know if this GoPro is going to pick it up close enough. But it slides through this hole. That hole is kind of a guide. And that yoke, when that little wheel comes up and hits that yoke, hits the limit. The idea is there's plenty of spring there. It's going to make contact and I steal 9 volts and I ground it and uh, it sounds the alarm and so I could wire that into the shack. The only problem is I actually need two wires into the shack and I only have one extra one extra terminal strip left so I don't have a, a 5 position so I'll just run the Cat5 here and just use those four and the other one will be free or put, put a terminal or something there. I'm not too worried about that but let me get this back connected and I'll show you how it works. Uh, yeah, and I just did very minimal adjustments. Uh, all I did was just keep cutting this uh, tip of this wooden dowel rod off, sanding the tip down a little bit so make it blunt and round. And I wanted to get it so that that wheel was in a quarter turn, within a quarter turn of that stop, because I don't want it to hit that lock and stop. It's pretty, uh, pretty dramatic on that motor and the tuner. So here we go. I have it set and it works perfect. So we're going to get close, and here's the stop. That's that big, big pin that they solder the silver-plated wire to. Uh, it looks like it hits that pulley, and that's a stop. So listen up. Right there. Look at that. Quarter within a quarter turn. So you'll see this, this uh, thing coming up. That trunnion. I call it a trunnion. It's kind of uh, just a post where they terminate the windings. And that's what actually hits this real roller and causes the interference uh, to, to stop. But it's, uh, look at that. I'd say within a quarter turn. Wow, that's piercing loud. 
and that's going to be good because I don't need anything past that. So if I'm coming full speed and as soon as I hear that it'll coast down well, maybe within an eighth of a turn. So let's try the full speed. So I'd be doing this blind. Ooh, that time I actually hit the stop. Oh boy, I may have to put a little extra length on that. You gotta be careful. And when I hear that beep, I have to stop quick. Wow. Yeah, I might have to, I don't know, put another shim there. Actually, what I could do is probably bend this out a little more. Well, yeah, I have to fudge with the contacts. But you get the idea. Or I could put a shim piece up in here, maybe. Make another yoke to glue up in there. Piece of shim stock. Get it to uh, sound the alarm just a little bit earlier. Yeah. Yeah, I think I went a little earlier. But anyway, there you go. That's uh, hope, hope this little GoPro cam was able to get up close enough to see this thing in action. Uh, I think it's pretty damn cool. See you later.